Hey everybody, it is Taylor of Summerdell Soul here. I'm working on a special project today. I am swapping the brakes on my mom's 380 SL, even though I have brand new shiny parts for the exoset. I'd say I'm the best child in the world, but this took entirely too long. While you always want to make sure your car is well chalked while you're lifting it, you definitely want to make sure it's well chalked while you're working on the brakes. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, but while the car is on the ground, crack the lug nuts loose, hoist the car back up, and then remove the wheels. Also, Pierce, you are a legend. Thank you so much for this tool. I love it. It's been a lifesaver. Go ahead and hoist those tires off. You'll notice I've got the Vredesteins on here. My mom only gets the finest European tires for her fine European vehicle. But for real, they're really good tires. So I was going to make a joke about how my cell phone keeps getting beaten up because I keep dropping it while I'm working on my car. But check this out. Look at that catch. I'm too good. Okay, okay. I'm done flexing. So to start, we're going to remove these brake pad sensors. You can pull these out. If you plan to reuse them, be very delicate. They're a dollar each, so go ahead and order some new ones with your brake components. I was able to reuse mine because I forgot to order these. So they can be reused, but while you're doing everything, go ahead and spend the extra two bucks to take care of them. With the sensors out of the way, now we can focus on the pins that hold all the components together. You'll want to start delicately tapping these out, and in the words of our favorite YouTube blender, don't breathe this. That dust is really bad for you. Just try and stay away from that. It smells good though. You can tap these out with a nail, a screwdriver, or another brake pad pin. Just be careful of your fingers. They, uh, they can be victims here. Not pleasant, but successful. Now pull out those pins. So unfortunately the spring tension of the pins popped out the metal plate here that holds in the brakes along with one of the brake pad sensors. You might have to use some pliers for these so just be careful pulling those out. From here what we'll do is compress one of the pads against the caliper by using the caliper itself as a wedge so you can just squeeze those together it'll move that piston back so you can shake that brake pad free. Whew. Girl you needed some brakes. Holy moly. Yikes. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. This one was a little bit trickier, so don't be discouraged if you feel like you have different tension from one side to the other. I definitely had to give us a little bit more oomph, but the result is the same. Break slid out. No. As I mentioned earlier, if you feel like reusing the brake pad sensor or you forgot to order them like I did, you can still pull these old ones out as long as there's not too much wear. On the other side, you can kind of see the pin indicator within the brake itself. There's going to be a pretty noticeable hole on the new brake pad that you can plug this back into and just kind of carefully wedge this out, be delicate with the plastic, and you can pop it right back into the new one. Here you can see where old and busted meets new hotness. We've got the brand new pad here with the old brake sensor installed. So as you can imagine, you saw the old brake pads. They were pretty worn down, so the pistons were pretty close to the rotor. So I've got to scoot those in here, really make sure those are getting compressed, pushing them toward the caliper or away from the rotor. Be very delicate with the piston seals. You do not want to damage those or else you'll leak brake fluid. You'll notice the volume is pretty low on this cut because the only thing more upsetting than the ASMR noises is the absolute mouth breathing going on behind the camera. Moving right along, apply the brake pad grease to the back of the pad. You definitely do not want this on the meaty front side. Ensure that meaty front side is facing the rotor with the greased back facing the caliper. Slide it into place and repeat to the other side. After making sure I had both of the pad faces facing the rotor, I knew I was ready to install the hardware. Here's where that metal clip comes into play that popped out a little bit earlier. So now that we have everything installed, this is actually going to be what separates the brake pad from the rotor when the brakes are not in use. So it actively pushes against those pads to separate until the piston is ready to push. So you're going to want to install that clip back in the back end by wedging this pin in up top, and then we're going to wedge the bottom one as well. I apologize as it looks like the flying spaghetti monster wanted to get in the way, but that should clear up pretty soon. After clearing the lip of the pin, I was able to carefully tap it with a hammer to try and get this a little bit more forward. With the top pin in place, I'm now ready to move forward with the bottom pin. It's a little bit trickier because the plate is pushing against it now that the top one's secured, so it's harder to clear the lip on this pin. 
you'll simultaneously want to press down on that plate and slide that pin forward so you can get over that lip so you can get in there with a hammer. You can see how the plate's getting a little bit crooked here. I adjusted this later with pliers to make sure it was making even pressure distribution. There is a soft line here that was pretty tricky to hammer around, so I was able to wedge something else in between in order to complete that pin through the hole. I think a bolt was getting in the way on the hammer on the bottom, so I did the same thing. Plug the brake pad sensors back in crisscross top to bottom and you're ready to roll. As always, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you guys watching and following along. It means the world and I will catch you next time.